one of the few people anywhere in the industry that when I see his face, I am made happy. He has earned it at ESPN, and he has done it his way in a way that's really cool, and he's carved out his own space where he gets to have his life in Washington, and it's not great hours for somebody who uh, is a star in our industry, but he has moved his life around so that he can occupy a space in sports where he's got an hour at the end of your night that still matters that you know is going to be crafted and well done by a generally likable person in a climate that is so polarizing that none of the people talking about sports on television get to be liked. What a kind introduction by you. Perhaps the kindest introduction I've ever heard for you. I I really respect this guy's work, uh, that he's navigated the labyrinth, and that he's nice to people. He mm -hmm. is not horrible to co-workers, and he is not threatened (laughs) by co-workers in the vanity business. So, Scott Van Pelt, we welcome you in. He's the uh, Midnight Sports Center. It's his. Uh, It's a Space that he dominates and he does it extraordinarily well. So thank you for being uh, on with us. I I don't think that anything I said is untrue. I think I've got it all right. Yes. I mean, you're asking me to agree to an incredibly kind thing. I'm horrible at taking compliments. I I do that self-deprecating thing sincerely. I just I find it easier to deflect and to say thanks. So I'll just say thanks because that was very nice. Does everyone like you is what Dan is no. asking. Well, right? you, Absolutely you, you, not. You take pride in the way that you do your job still. You care deeply about what it is you're doing. You're never mailing it in. You're No, no, you couldn't. You couldn't. If you just if, if if you're just sitting out there by yourself and you just stop paying attention or caring, it would be real evidence. So but you know what? I was I thought about this the other day, Dan. Driving home after particularly after Denver won, where you talk to Malone and you talk to Jamal Murray, you talk to Jeff Green. God, that was so cool. There's a guy, 15 years, 11 teams, and it's landing in his lap that he's won. And the, the, the emo- he literally just said, I, I, I would like to go now because he just, he was, <laughs> the enormity of, 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 a, of a person in the, in the moment of their greatest professional achievement. And you get to share that with him. I, I wish there were a better word than cool, but that's just a really cool thing. And we, we get to do that. And look, there's some nights that just, or some nights, but nights like that are really fun. I was stunned and don't think it can be covered enough that the MVP of the league, yes, great for Murray, fun. uh, You know, you've got Gordon running around the streets of Denver enjoying it with the fans, but the MVP is telling you everybody hates their job, don't they? It's the most interesting thing I've ever heard Jokic say. (laughs) I've never seen a true superstar on on the – certainly not on the NBA stage, Dan, that didn't at least – kind of like the icing a little bit, right? Let me put my finger in the ice. Just what does it taste like? Doesn't care. And you can't, that can't be performative either. He sincerely doesn't give a crap about any of the ancillary. He just wants to go back to Serbia and see his horse. And he means that. And he's brilliant on, in a way really no one's ever been. I, I find that I find that fascinating. Uh, you can find it fascinating, but it's not charming. And I mean, I'm not sure it's good for your sport. Like, I'm not sure that having a guy that joyless about, like, Welcome just, to the party, pal. I, no, but I, no, his game is wonderful, Stugatz. I don't think his yeah, game. it's garbage. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think his game is boring or garbage. McLean. But I don't think that he's terribly interested in sharing the joy with the customer. Yeah. Like, the customer <laughs> is feeling like it, the customer's more joyous than the guy who's winning the MVP. Yeah, Scott, the, the, the thing I said is part of the job and – there have been recent superstars that try to eschew this part of the job. Kawhi Leonard is a great example. Uh, Jokic is a new example, but part of the job is selling the game. Like you, you do that when you're you're not just oh I play basketball and that's it. I don't have any other yeah. responsibilities outside of it. And so when Jokic takes something that the league promotes as this is our biggest event, this is the most important thing, this is what all these people are killing themselves over, and he's like ah oh, whatever, like. He's lessening the importance of it, much like music artists who say, I'm not going to the Grammys. They make the Grammys into something that's not that important for people to pay attention to. The difference is the Grammys are subjective, whereas the NBA championship is objective. That's the objective both in the sense of that it's not according to opinion, but also objective in terms of that's the objective of everybody working in this business. So I think he does the league and the game a disservice when he plays that I'm too cool for this or I'm not interested in that. That's a real, uh, and, and that's an interesting way, I mean, to frame it from, because the Grammys are the MVP, right? And he didn't care about that either. 
and he didn't care about the voting. But then when you win the chip, which is the prize that everyone's participating for, and you don't have joy in that, I hadn't really considered that. Maybe it's funny slash funny the first time, but then if it happened again and it was, you know, he reaches the uh, Dirk Diggler phase of Boogie Nights where he gets the trophy and just goes, thanks, and walks <laughs> off. I mean, there, there needs to maybe be some some joy in the achievement. I, I, I really hadn't considered that. Scott, the Live PGA merger is fascinating. You and I love the sport. Um, yeah. Let's just put aside, because we know no one likes where the money is coming from, okay? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Phil's initial reason for joining Live was because some of the things that were happening on the PGA Tour did not sit well with him. You know, the money wasn't enough, the name and likeness, the ability to sell their social media a lot of the stuff that he was fighting for, he turned out to be right because the PGA caved. It's interesting, right? Well, what what is often the only thing that's understood in a negotiation is a loaded weapon. Uh, Live was that. And the PGA Tour responded almost immediately to all of the very pointed criticisms that those that went to Live made. And suddenly they found millions under couch cushions um, but what's what's interesting, Stu Gatz, is that this this war chest, if you will, that the tour had was was short term. Their burn rate was way too high. And if and I mean, when Rory essentially said, look, you can't go toe to toe with people who have a bottomless well of money, you're never going to be able to compete. And it seems that's what happened. There's still so much that's totally unknown about it. Uh, and you've got the government saying they'd like to look into it. I don't honestly have any clue what will happen ultimately, other than that what once was as it related to that game, that sport, won't ever be again as it was constructed. Does it bother you? Like, how often do you get personally offended by things happening around the sports you love? I'm um, I'm pretty pragmatic, and I think I'm pretty much an adult about when it comes to money, uh, that if we're looking – under the microscope or under the black light for the clean money. I don't know that there, it exists um, necessarily. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but n- no, not really. I, I just, I don't know. I've never had a nine figure decision to make in my life. And <laughs> I have a hard time judging those that do. I understand you could say, Hey, look, this is, there's some, there's some real atrocities here. And that's, that's accurate. Uh, I just don't, I don't know if with a hundred million dollars before me, I don't know what I do. Um, so no, I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me just cause I think I'm just honest with myself about it. Do you feel that Jay Monahan's credibility has been permanently damaged and is that going to impact the way that you cover him and the story going forward? No doubt. No, I, I mean, I, I, again, I, I think just kids, this, I, I, my answer to, to that would be the same as my answer to Dan. I don't know how you can't just take the facts in front of you and just, he said, he, he said, you can't take the money to players that were on the PGA Tour. And then he took the money. And he went on with Jim Nance in Canada last year and talked about 9-11. And then, and he said as, he said it as much, Jessica. He said, I know I'll, I'll be seen as a hypocrite. Well, yeah, because that's hypocritical. So I immediately said that because I believe that's what it is. Now, again, I want to be clear. I don't know what I don't know about this. And so I'd love to know. What, what what are you exactly doing? What will this look like so that I can be fair? I mean, it, I think being fair is important and it, it's hard to know what to say about something when I have absolutely no clue what is there beyond what has been reported. Scott, beyond the money that they're going to be making out of this deal, how much of this or what are the positives for the game and for the fans of golf? Oh, they're going to grow the game. I mean, haven't you? Heard? <laughs> they're going to grow the game. That's the biggest nonsense. What the hell does that mean? What are you growing? I mean, you're going to have a so you're going to go have a tournament in what, Dubai or Portland, Oregon, or wherever you have a tournament, and suddenly, oh, you know what? Let's some guy sitting around going, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to play some golf today. <laughs> they're growing it. I, I honestly, I think it's more fun when the as it will be this week in L.A. When you get the best players uh, in the sport together, that's that's what's fun. And when you have a fractured sort of deal where a number of the best play here, a number of the best play there, well, then it, it would be like if there were a competing league for the NBA and you just didn't see, you know, you didn't get to see Jimmy Butler and Nikola Jokic share the floor. Well, now you're going to get to see that more. 
Uh, it's not an apples to apples comparison, obviously an individual sport, but my, my sense is just, if you enjoy that sport, seeing the best play more uh, than less is the win. So basically back to where it was before live golf existed. We're, Essentially. And just everybody, everybody will be, uh, <laughs> everybody will be obscenely compensated because there's this fun that, that, uh, that truly has limitless resources to, to, to give them the money that pro- I guess you listen, it, when you look at NBA Supermax, like it doesn't trouble me if, if, if a bunch of guys playing golf get to get eight figure, mm-hmm. nine figure deals either. Scott, I love that the best golfer in the world, at least at the majors, is a guy who is going to Panthers game, who is drinking with the Panthers, who really doesn't care that much about golf or working that hard. Um, nope. And he's headed, you know, into the U.S. Open with a chance to win his third. And not many people, as you know, have won the PGA and the U.S. Open three times apiece. Does Kepka have a chance at Jack Nicholas? Do you think he has a chance? No, I think that's a bridge too far. And really? I think, no. Well, to, I mean, to get to 18? Yeah. I mean, hey, look, I, I started covering Tiger a uh, hundred years ago when he was when he was you know 21 and he won at Augusta and. That he just Brooks is he's he's older and he's coming off significant injury. I mean, I if he if you ask me double digits, I I'd buy that. Okay. He's demonstrated that when he's healthy, he's absolutely as good as anyone, and he does have a a, a pretty well rounded sort of view of what I mean. Hopefully, all of us look at our jobs and we take them seriously. But do they do they matter that much in the grand scheme as opposed to other stuff you'd like to do? Uh, Kepka's Kepka wants to go to sports, do, do his thing, and um, and he wants to play in the majors that matter. That's what that's what he cares about. He doesn't care about the rest of them. He really doesn't. And he doesn't seem to be real pro one tour or another either. He's pretty pro Brooks. <laughs> and um, I think they gave him an opportunity to wave that flag after the PGA Championship. He just didn't care. He or at least didn't seem to, I should say. Um, he's, a, he's a badass player when he's healthy, and he is, again, we are out of time, unfortunately. The U.S. Open is this weekend, and I failed to ask Van Pelt about his voice just totally giving out on air. Man, I screwed <laughs> up. See you later. <laughs> Next time.